Hey everyone, it's Timmy Gobbles. All right, doing a third part because I went back and I uh, man, I made a lot of mistakes. So I, you know, I got this nice comment from Chendrak about using noise to make caves instead of all the complicated stuff. And so, you know, I went back to my little noise displayer thing and um, he also suggested rigid or ping pong noise. And so I needed to add a new noise type since I need a whole nother one. And then I need a new rule that checks that noise and whether or not it's going to fill in that tile based on the noise value. And then we'll throw that into the terrain layered thing right inside that big old loop and go ahead and check it with an if statement because it's a rule so it's returning a bool and oh there's some kind of error oh yeah okay so i need to make sure that right because the tile vector isn't gonna exist if um it's in the air so need to check that all right so then i had to change the values around a little bit to get this to work but then there we go some squiggly wiggly caves and it didn't even take that long and it was really fast it took almost no time at all to generate so that was a really cool suggestion i thought like oh i can use some cellular noise to separate the caves a bit and boy that i just could not figure out what i was doing with that i think going back in retrospect i should have been multiplying it instead of just checking it if it was a certain value um, but i ended up trying this laplacian filter and i mean this didn't work out but i thought the result was kind of neat so you find the difference between the center times four with its uh, neighbors i think they're called von neumann neighbors and then bam look at that it just breaks up the cells literally by their boundary uh, so that was really something and I tried some domain warping and things like that, but it I I think I need to spend a lot more time to figure out values that look nice because here it's kind of uh, where it divides, it doesn't look very good, and I probably didn't have the right kind of rigid noise. I tried this kind of setting, and this looks a little better. This is nice. It has these little free floating bits. That's pretty cool. Um, and I think Terraria does use this kind of method to generate it. And here was another suggestion that um, I was doing cellular automata wrong and they were absolutely right. And um, when I read this comment, I was already kind of working on a solution for it, but you know, they they made some good points too. Um, so thank you Badunia's code for that. And so here I am going to just look at an array of points instead of all of them. And I need to know what to fill and what to keep. So then in the loop, I'm going to check if we want to keep the point. And if not, it goes in the fill queue. And if we do keep it, it goes in the keep points. And then at the end, I need to fill in those fill points and then set the, um, the points that we're going to be looking at equal to the keep points. And so that ended up being a lot quicker. Like you could see in that comparison that the, it was just blazing by. All right, next, I was looking at changing the function that chooses which edge is better in the minimum spanning tree. Um, so instead of using the length, you know, we could use a random value and then you get this messed up map. And this kind of sucks because there's these really long paths and they don't look very good. Um, but some of the randomness is kind of nice. I do. I like parts of it, but I don't like those really long edges. And the reason why those really long edges are there is when we do a Delaney triangulation. So here I'm just going to mock one up real quick. So here's some points and we got to make all the triangles. The Because the Delaney triangulation is going to be convex, you're going to have these really big boundary lengths. And those are just, you know, compared to all the other edges, they're just huge. And so, you know, uh, here it is with cellular automata applied. Um, you still have these really long paths. And I just don't think this would be good in the game because it allows you just to traverse that without having to really explore. Um, so what you can do is you can multiply that random value by the length and then 
you still retain some of the longer edges, but it keep it filters out the extremely long ones. And so another thing we can do is we can try looking at the slope. Like maybe I don't want the edges that are too vertical. Um, so here there's too much bias on the slope. So we end up with a very, very flat, disgusting looking map. Um, and another approach here is we can try calculating the angle instead of the slope. And that lets us make more like easier choices, I guess. Like if I wanna choose a 45 degree angle, it's gonna be way easier to do that using the angle instead of the slope. And so I added that 0.5 because then it's not gonna choose really long edges that have very small slope. See here, if we drop it to 0.1, then there's just gonna be too much bias on the slope. I think it ended up working better with something like a two or a three added onto it. Um, but so I scaled that angle so that it was between zero and 0.5. So it's it's kind of confusing. So here, what if I take, you know, 0.6 minus the angle. So if the angle is vertical, that's 0.5. So it's gonna really favor values that are 0.5. And we're gonna have this really gross looking vertical map. All right, here we go. Look at it. It almost looks like a semic lettering, kind of like what my kids' letters look like. Nah, they look more blocky than that. Or we can favor a 45 degree angle by subtracting 0.25. And then here we have some shapes that um, look weird. All right, and this led me into this issue where my Prim's algorithm was awful. So here, I couldn't even get the engine to do a tree with a thousand points. So it's like, how am I gonna generate a big world if I can't even do something this big? So I went and looked into my algorithm. Here is the new version, and it generated one with 15,000 points in a couple minutes. So that was a lot better. So let's go ahead and look at that algorithm and I'll walk you through it. So one thing I did was I made that fitness function one of the inputs. So you can still do the angle or some kind of random element without having to put it in the code itself. Next is I have an array that keeps track of what points connect to what. So that's gonna be nodes. So it's an array of arrays. And so then we go down to the triangle, the triangles. So each triangle has three numbers in it. So each of those numbers, I need to check if that node already has those numbers in it or not, and then add them. So like, here's an example. So if it's one, four, six. So if one has four, uh, don't do anything, otherwise append it, so on and so forth. And I need to do that to one, four, and six. So that's why that's all chunky like that. So then I'm done with triangles so we can clear that out. Next, I have this array that says whether or not a point has been added to the tree and an array of fitness values, which I just default to infinity. Then I have an array that keeps track of the edges that we're adding. Let's go ahead and look at the loop. So U is gonna be the node that we want to add to the tree. So first we need to look through the fitness values and see which one's the lowest, and that's gonna to correspond to the index of the point that we wanna add. Then we need to find which of the edges is the shortest connected to that node U. And then also we need to look at all of the points that connect to U and update the fitness array with those points. Then we can add that edge to our tree that we're eventually we're gonna spit out. And so that's kind of a quick rundown of the algorithm. Um, you know, you guys can always ask questions in the comments if it doesn't make sense. And so it's just a lot faster. And here it is in the game, all chunky, sped up times four because it's I'm, I'm slow and I, I don't have a mouse when I'm playing, so it looks a little janky. But anyways, um, this will be the last video on caves for a while. Next, I'm gonna be looking at grammars so like here's an l system and here's another l system that's a little more crazy and here's one that looks like a triangle with holes in it and here's a little serpinski's triangle thing going on and here we have 
with it time lapsed. So I'm gonna be busy for the next couple of weeks, so I don't know when this video is coming come out, but I'll probably just take my time with it and try to make something that isn't as janky as this cave series. And if you guys have any requests, please go ahead and make them so I can start working on those. Otherwise, y'all have a good time. Oh, and please subscribe if you're not, because I have to convince my wife that this is worth doing.